an architect, you've probably heard the term Manual J before. If you're a homeowner though, you may not know what that term means, but it's an important topic for everybody to know whether you're building a new house, a renovation, or an addition, or if you're even just wondering if your house has the right size AC system. In this video, we're going to talk about what a Manual J is and what exactly is needed to have someone complete one for your home. My name is Dana and I'm the general manager at ProCalx and today we're talking about manual J's or what's also known as a load calculation. Simply put, a manual J is a calculation of how much heating or air conditioning your home needs. Now you might do a Google search and try to look up what size AC system do I need and you'd probably come across something that says 400 to 500 square foot per ton. Now you might think, well that seems pretty easy, why do I need a professional to do a manual J for me? Well, although that rule of thumb used to be used a long time ago, and some people still use it today, with the way that houses are being built more and more efficient, it actually ends up being pretty wrong and leads to systems that are oversized and can cause issues like mold and mildew, which you definitely don't want. So a manual J is actually a very detailed calculation that takes into account a lot of different factors about the home. One of the first things that we have to do whenever we're starting a manual J is collect all of that information that we need in order to be able to get an accurate result. So, what information is needed for a manual J? One of the first things we need is a floor plan of the house or building. And importantly, it has to have dimensions. What manual J cares about the most is the building envelope or basically the skin of the house, what separates the conditioned air inside from the unconditioned air in the garage or outside. So the dimensions are important to make sure we get an accurate representation of that skin. This also includes things like the ceiling height in the rooms or any vaulted ceilings, as that helps make sure we get an accurate volume for the building as well. Now, knowing the layout of the rooms inside the house, while not essential for a manual J, is going to be important down the road if you end up needing a duct design because you do want to know how much conditioned air needs to go into each room. Most of the time we receive the floor plan as part of the building plan set from either the architect or the builder. But if you don't have official building plans, don't worry. You can actually make your own floor plan with just a measuring tape, graph paper, and a ruler. Next, we need to know the orientation or what direction the house faces. This is important especially because of the windows. Remember that floor plan we just talked about? It also needs to show the locations of all the windows on the house. That way we can determine what direction the windows are facing too. A house with a lot of windows that are facing west is going to have a much higher load than the same house with either few or no windows facing west. So one of the first questions we always ask is, what direction does the house face? This is a big one. So we mentioned how Manual J is just concerned with the building envelope. Now we need to know what that envelope is made of. This includes things like the walls, whether they're frame or block, and what the R value of the additional insulation being put on that wall is. Now one important thing to note is the software we use, WriteSoft, actually already has calculated R values for things like the raw materials, the frame, the concrete block, the sheathing. So we don't actually need the R values from you or from the homeowner for those items. But what we need to know is what the R value of the insulation that's being added to the wall is. So if it's a block wall and you're adding R4.1 foil insulation, that R4.1 is the value that's important for us to know to be able to put into the calculation. We don't want to know that the block wall as a whole equals R7 because this might mean that you end up with a report that says you're adding R7 insulation when you actually only added R4.1 and then you fail inspection. We also need to know the foundation type, whether it's slab, crawl space, basement, and any additional insulation that's going to be on there. 
as well as any floors that are over unconditioned space like the floor over the garage or floor over outside air. We want to know what additional insulation is going to be put in that floor as well. Then up at the ceiling, we need to know the ceiling insulation value, but we also want to know whether that insulation is going to be put at the ceiling level or if it's going to be put up on the underside of the roof deck, something like spray foam. And this actually is also called knowing whether you have a vented attic or an encapsulated attic. And that's a topic for another video. But in short, an encapsulated attic actually helps lower the total load on the home and can lead to needing a smaller size system and money savings. So that's another uh, important item that we want to make sure that we know for the load calculation. The ceiling insulation R value and whether it's at the ceiling level or underside of the roof deck. Another factor that needs to be considered is where the ductwork is located, whether that be in the attic, basement, crawl space, or even within the conditioned space of the house. As ductwork is traveling through an unconditioned space, such as a hot attic or a cold crawl space, there are losses associated with that, and we want to make sure that those losses are accounted for in the total load for the house. This is one that not everyone thinks of, but actually how leaky your house is can affect how much heating or air conditioning you need. The best way to determine this is by having a blower door test done on your house. This will tell you how leaky the house is in terms of air changes per hour. Now in Florida, where we do a lot of our work, the building code actually allows up to seven air changes per hour. However, with the more efficient building construction becoming the norm, we're seeing values really down more towards three air changes per hour, which is going to affect the potentially sized system that you need for your house. So that's another factor that we want to make sure we take into account with the manual J. So once we have everything set about the building envelope, the construction materials, the orientation, the windows, the doors, the infiltration, then the last thing we have to put in is the loads for anything that's inside the home. So this includes things like appliances in the kitchen, living room, game room, or even home office. And there's some default values that we use for these, as well as making sure we put in any occupants that are going to be in the home. Now typically this number is equal to the number of bedrooms plus one. And this is because the master bedroom usually accounts for two people. So we input those default values for those loads and then that's pretty much all we need. So there you have it, a basic intro into what goes into a manual J calculation. I hope this video was helpful and if you haven't already make sure you click that like button and hit subscribe to make sure you get notified every time we upload a new video. And if you're thinking about getting a manual J calculation done on your home, make sure to visit us at www.procalcs.net and we would love to help you make sure you have the right sized HVAC system. Thanks for watching. Thank you.